Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fulton Street Beats. I'm getting an awesome response on the series of Chibson style guitars, Chibson guitars, that I have been doing lately. And I want to give you an oversight of why I chose to do some reviews of, well, these Chibsons and what they mean to me and what they may mean to you and what they might mean to, well, guitar snobs. Um, first off, let's start out and talk about what they are. What any guitar is. Well, they're pieces of wood with some electronics and some magnets. And um, they're not a complicated mechanism for sure there's no magic that goes on with any of them regardless of what the guitar gods might tell you there is zero magic happening they might have a aura about them that have been put out there through the years where you need to play authentic to to mean anything for you to be somebody for you to be put on that pedestal at least think you're on that pedestal in other words to make you a legend in your own mind but that is the farthest from reality that it could, it could ever be. Let's face it. Most of us do this for a hobby. We have fun. We play guitars. We're not Angus Young. We're not Slash. We're not out making millions of dollars through music. Now, that being said, of course, big players get endorsed by big brands. Because that's the world of business. That's how it works. Um, one hand washes the other. For instance, when Slash played a fake, an outright fake Gibson Les Paul on the Appetite for Destruction album, that was considered okay because it saved Gibson, the company. That's right. Yeah, a lot of people didn't know that. His guitar was an actual, what we can actually consider a counterfeit because it was built by a luthier who was really, really good. And he counterfeited, no matter how, for all intents and purposes, it was the closest that I have ever seen, with exception of maybe one other guitar, to an authentic Gibson. But it was custom built for Slash. That's right. And then Gibson needed to save the company and ask Slash if they could counterfeit the counterfeit, basically. So it's very weird how that works. And it amazes me how the lovers of certain brands can be so loyal to a corporate entity that's really not out for their best interests. You know, I know I lost a lot of you on that very opening statement, but that's okay. For the ones that stuck around, you're probably curious to hear the rest. Now, chips and guitars have been out for ages, right? They've been out forever. And Ch Chinese manufacturers have been building guitars for, wow, years and years, right? And they got it down. They really, really do. Now, Chipsons, on the other hand, have been, well, a series of mistakes throughout the years. And um, they've never really been of that good of quality. But they've gotten better and better. Now, there's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo we can get into. And it seems like every time I try to cross that path and, and put some information out there, we just have people jump in with their interpretation of case law and what's law and what's not law without them really even knowing any laws of commerce. Um, you know, there's very little that the U.S. can do about Chinese, well, stealing intellectual property in general. There's very little they can do because, well, they have to trade with the Chinese. They have to trade back and forth. And a lot of, well, the Chinese government doesn't recognize American copyright. They just refuse to. So right there should tell you a little bit about now do you hate all of china because they're not recognizing well commerce and big business copyright honestly as a consumer i don't care what i care about is getting the most for my money and that's what any guitar player any hobbyist anybody should really care about right i mean that's what you should care about getting the most for your money because that means if you're getting a quality instrument now in 2023 case in point with this really exceptionally nice Chipson SG that is exceptionally nice. And if you're getting this amount of quality versus an $1,800, $2,000 Gibson that we just unboxed not too long ago, and um, 
what's really started me down the road to these chips and guitars. I'll be honest with you. If people, you know, if you really want to know why I started doing chips and really getting into them is because, well, I was so disappointed in the quality of Gibson. And there was a buildup to that. It wasn't just that guitar. It was the quality of Kramer guitars, a few gu guitars before that. The quality control was horrendous. And I was starting to see a pattern across the board. So I said, geez, now I'm buying these guitars. I'm not getting them for free. So this is my money. I have stake in this because it's my money and I want the best I can get for my money. And I also want to bring you guys valuable content so you know exactly what's out there. Now, I always get the remarks, um, you shouldn't be re even reviewing those, that Chinese junk garbage plywood. Well, sir, that is not the case. They're not Chinese junk plywood. Actually, they're mahogany bodies and they're built very, very well. As a matter of fact, this particular one was is built better than the Gibson SG standard is. Yeah, with better quality control and 10 times better fit and finish and setup. That's right. Out of the box. Now, is it authentic to a Gibson? Did they really try to pull off that SG uh, Gibson um, look? Well, no, they didn't. It's different. It's thicker. It's a thicker guitar. And you'll know right away by the weight that it's not an SG. That's your, they, As soon as you put it in your hand, you'll know because it's heavier. There's more of a guitar here because it's thicker. Now, I have done things to this guitar, and I know I'm going to be all over the place, but bear with me. I have done things to this guitar, such as added a Gibson authentic pickguard. This pickguard right here is actually off from the black standard SG that we ordered. And what's really funny about it, even this pickguard has major flaws all around it still. It's cut wrong. It's not right for a Gibson SG. Flawed pit guard. It just wasn't cut right. They didn't do a good job. The tooling that they used must have been horrible. But anyhow, I wanted to see if a Gibson pit guard would fit on this guitar. And a lot of you are going, well, obviously it did, but it didn't. Not even close. I had to change everything on this guitar to make it work. I had to reroute the cavity. Now, this, this guitar body has two holes for humbuckers. It's not an open cavity like they used to see in a lot of Gibsons. So there are two individual holes for the humbuckers. And I had to route out back up into the cavity f to, to move the pickup down to fit this pit guard on. But then you know what happened? Then what happened was the switch hole, right? Wasn't right. It would have been up into where the pit guard was. Yes. So I filled in the hole underneath, drilled another hole here to relocate the switch to run this pit guard. And I've added a Wilkinson pin style bridge, which is quite nice. And um, I've also added some locking tuners. Here we go. Some locking tuners on the back. These are uh, Geiger locking tuners in nickel. And then we did Epiphone Pro Buckers on this, the complete kit plug and play with the push pull pots. So very cool also. And then I added some pointers to it. Also, very cool guitar that uh, sounds good. It's a great sounding guitar. It sounds good. It sounded, there's the kicker. The pickups that were in this and the wiring that was in this, I should have kept it because it sounded outstanding, even better than it sounds now. So I kind of kicked myself in the ass that actually changed everything. But my point is 2023 is a very good year for consumers for Gibsons and a very bad year for high-end guitars trying to compete. And that's why, ready, drum roll please. That is why we review these. That is why we take a look at them. That is why we dive into them because you guys need to know, the big manufacturers need to know exactly what's coming out of China. Now, they can complain, they can bitch, they can piss, they can moan, but the problem is with 
whoever's making them, right? Let them fight it out. And in the meantime, what that does is, at least it should in a realistic world, is make the quality that has not been so hot lately with these big manufacturers makes them step up their quality because we're getting guitars like this for less than 300 bucks and i you know i might have a little over 100 150 more into it in parts but still an outstanding guitar that is better and let me emphasize this I, you guys people don't believe it i get the haters and i get the guitar snobs and the gibson fanboys if you're looking at me, I'm talking to you, Gibson fanboy, you know the one that makes no sense when you make comments and say that they're made of plywood, they can't be good, they're going to fall apart in five years. Couldn't be farther from the truth, and you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Frankly, you sound like a fool. So stop. Stop right there, fanboy. Because the thing is, without these guitars, Gibson will never up their quality control again. They just won't. They won't. They Maybe they'll take a peek and go, oh, shit. Now, listen, we can go down the counterfeit road. We can go in the legalities of it, but it's not worth it. I don't care. I really don't care. What I want is that good old American company, Gibson, to do better. And with the fanboys, with the fanboys, and you won't be around much longer, fanboys. You won't be around much longer if Gibson Quality Control keeps being so bad you're not going to be around much longer when you're gone the generation behind you isn't going to give them a second look especially at their prices right especially when they get a guitar and go oh you know and the thing about new guitar players is they mod the hell out of their guitars the old players tend to just buy them and play them and they don't know shit about them they take their guitar to a luthier to have work done well, your new players, you know what they're doing? Because you can't afford shit anymore? Because everything's so expensive? They're forced to learn how to build and modify their guitars. How to make them better. And that's rock and roll. Think about it. That's more rock and roll than anything. Can you imagine when rock and roll was coming out and somebody saying, You can only play this. What? That's not rock and roll, right? That's communism. It's not rock and roll. Rock and roll is anti-establishment, right? It's anti-corporate. It's doing what you feel you want to do. That's rock and roll. So grab a Chibson. You want to see, you want to see heads turn? Grab a Chibson chips and take it on stage. And I know plenty of people who do that. Plenty of people who play out and they'll take their... They own expensive guitars. And they'll go out and they'll play their Chibson live. Why? Because it sounds just as good, right? And they're not damaging... They're expensive Gibson. And it's lasting. And it's lasting more than five years. Even the crap Chibsons of past have been modified to be excellent guitars. My point is in 2023, they're amazing guitars. And not just for the money like I used to say. They're okay for the money. Some of these guitars are simply outstanding. Case in point, this black uh, Les Paul Custom that's, well, of course not a Gibson. And there's so many differences. I can't compare it to a Gibson because there's so many, so many differences. But it's a cool guitar that plays awesome. And it looks really good. And it plays good. It's got a great weight, great feel, outstanding pickups, outstanding setup. Can't complain about it. And this is how a lot of them are coming in and manufacturers are getting pissed. How dare a channel highlight something with quality that we don't agree with that shouldn't have that quality. Well, I say to all the big, big manufacturers is put your money where your mouth is. Drop your prices, up your QC, compete, and nobody will want them. But until then, we're going to buy them because we can afford them. And there's nothing worse than paying two, $3,000 for a guitar, because that did it for me, and having it be shit. Having the quality control worse than budget guitars. And I'm not talking chips and budget guitars. I'm talking regular budget guitars. When I have IYVs that crush Gibson or a Leo James in QC that crushes Gibson, that's that's crazy. When you're having three, $400 guitars and sometimes less, in reality, in reality, crush Gibson and build quality, there is a big problem and they're living on the name of the past 
And that that's got to change. And that's the whole point. That's why we do these, to keep them in check. And, well, we have to disseminate this information to everybody, right? You have to. How can anybody say you can't show that? That's not right. You're a communist. You're supporting China. Okay, maybe I, I maybe I am. Maybe there's people over there working, right? Oh, but they're working for peanuts. We get that all the time. We get a child slave labor. I challenge anybody to do this. You go online and find me one picture of a child being beaten in a guitar factory, building guitars, because that's not the case. You know what? When I order these, I always have pictures sent to me of them being built and the serial numbers a lot of times on the back, and we'll get to those guitars soon. And serial numbers, because I'll request my own serial number, because I don't, well, I don't want a Gibson serial number. Um, so I started doing that. And you know what? The facilities these are being built in are really nice. There seems to be a lot of adults around knowing what they're doing. And um, the manufacturing process seems very clean and very nice over there. So, hmm, where are they coming from? And another argument. Well, it's Chinese. Why are you giving your money to the Chinese? I don't know. Gibson's over there with Epiphone, right? They're in China building guitars at a lower price to sell to you, but that's okay, right? Guys, they're all in the same area. All the manufacturers and, and, and factories are all in the same area. What's going on? Everybody knows what's going on over there. It's okay when you're when the fanboys say, oh, Gibson can do it because are they hire it's American workers over there? No, they're Chinese workers. Well, they have standards. Did they have standards when they were using illegal species of woods and they got raided by the federal government? Did they have standards and morals then? So it's different if you're a Gibson fanboy and Gibson does something wrong, then you'll back them, right? But when somebody else does something, you can't. It, 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 it makes no sense. And in the end, like I said, wooden electronics. My job is to show you what the wooden electronics are. Nothing more, nothing less. And maybe create an equal board across the board that guitar manufacturers can, well, play on. And say, hey, this guitar might be better than ours. Let's step up our game and lower our prices. Let's compete. But that's not what they're doing. They rather sue. They rather turn a blind eye to what's really happening and sue. But they're not suing the Chinese because, well, they can't. They don't care. They don't care. And that's good. That is good for you, the consumer. That is good even if you're a Gibson lover. And I love Gibson. So... I don't want to come across as a Gibson hater because I do like the company and I think they could be much better and do much better than they are now because we all remember how Gibson used to be, correct? And that was the name and the reputation that people are living on now, but it's not the same. It's simply not the same. And I don't understand why because a QC is not a real hard job to do, right? I don't know. Um... If you're going to charge that much for a guitar, well, you better be charging that much for the guitar because you're paying your workers extra to make sure that guitar is pristine and perfect. And not come out with a ridiculous statement saying, hey, the blemishes on a Gibson are unique to a Gibson, and that's what makes it a Gibson. No, the blemishes on a Gibson means the Gibson is shit. And that's a fact. Regardless of what's on the headstock, a nice guitar is a nice guitar, and a shit guitar is a shit guitar. And that's what it's all about, right? I mean, how else can you explain it? It is what it is. Nice guitar. Now, this is not plywood. None of my Gibsons on the wall is plywood. Is there some better than others? Hell yes, there's some better than others. And that's what we're always looking for to present the best best and the worst we had one with a broken neck we call it out had a broken neck and that was one like this gold one right here which this is probably the worst gibson here um it's muddy sounding it looks pretty but there's a couple flaws in it but are the flaws worse than the gibson sg standard i would say no no the gibson was a dog shit and if you haven't seen that video you can go back and watch that video 
And then I have people complaining because I compared a Chibson to a Gibson and how dare I. And there's no way it's better than the Gibson. After showing all the flaws, numerous flaws, and flaws I didn't even show, on the Gibson. How is that even based in reality? Don't be a team player in your life. Be a player that wants the best for you. And wants the company that you like to succeed. Because if they don't get with it, they won't succeed no matter how many sub brands they keep coming up with. Or what companies they buy out. Or what they do. Or how many people they sue. I mean, that, let's face it. The suing and their attorneys. That leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. Because they're so happy. And what's good for the goose should be good for the gander, right? So you, you promote a counterfeit guitar through Slash and then get pissed off at other manufacturers who copy what you do. I don't understand the logic in that. And people could say, well, it was a luthier and it was American luthier. That's why. What? I think a lot of people are more racist than they want to admit. I have no problem with the Chinese people. Maybe their government is shit. But so's ours. Stop being for corporate interest and be for the average person, the consumer. Because if we don't do that, if we don't have competition, if we don't have competition no matter where it comes from, Okay? And if you don't understand that, you better take a business class. If you don't understand that, no matter where the competition comes from or what mumbo jumbo they put around trademarks and copyright, if you don't have competition, the product that is made here will turn to shit. Case in point, it already has. And that is why we review Chibson Guitars. So we can step up our game here in the U.S., and not get trounced on. And will I keep buying Chipsons? Yes. Until they fix their QC issues. And I would love to see a reasonably priced guitar from Gibson. Because let's face it. The Epiphones, their higher end Epiphones, are what Gibsons should be costing. They're relying on all these high auction prices and these $16,000, $20,000, $40,000 guitars ridiculous wood and electronics it's that simple well collectors drive up the prices collectors aren't going to be around forever that is what they're really i mean they're not gonna be around forever they're just not when they're dead and gone the children behind them are going to go what the was my parents thinking collecting those pieces of wood and electronics while they're all playing well other guitars that do the same thing but better and that's the reality of what's going to happen because, well, it's an unsustainable system the way it's going. All right, thanks for watching Fult Street Beats. If you could hit that like button, share and subscribe. And remember, if you chime in and you're rude, you're disrespectful in the comment section below. Um, I love opinions. Opinions are great. You can leave them. But if you're an outright asshole, you will be banned from the channel, period. I do not feed the trolls. Keep that in mind. Thanks a lot, guys. Love y'all. Bye.